The political impasse in River State took a deeper crisis dimension yesterday as members of the State House of Assembly initiated impeachment moves along partisan lines. With Speaker of the House, Martins Ame Wule, his deputy Dumle Mao, and Chief Judge of the State, Justice Samuel Chibuzo Amadi, as the first casualty, reportedly. The government has actually denied suspending the chief judge or any other uh, officer of state. Eight members of the state legislature loyal to Governor Similai Fubara impeached the speaker and his deputy. Not satisfied, the eight lawmakers suspended the chief judge of the state, Justice Ahmadi, and directed the governor to appoint an acting chief judge for the state. Uh, the embattled governor, who promised to speak out on the crisis before the weekend, said he had never committed any impeachable offense to warrant his removal from office by the lawmakers. Some youths in support of the governor have taken to the streets in Port Arcot to decry the activities of the anti-Fubara lawmakers. Joining me to discuss this is Opunabo Nkotaria, civil rights advocate. Uh, Opunabo, uh, Welcome to Plus Politics. Good evening, Nigerians. Good evening, my brother. What is the state of affairs in Rivers? We will take the privilege of you being in situ in Port Harcourt now. Well, on easy calm pervades the air. We are all seized of what happened two days ago, about 48 hours ago when there was an impeachment move the plan was to impeach the government and they eventually to move the government before then the leader was removed from office and even the government itself was shot at this was she said by the deputy commissioner of police operations which i describe as mutiny you can imagine if they had killed the government what would have happened and for the the Council of Police officials to have shot at the governor, I mean, there's more to it than meets the eye. We have to investigate that. Was he directed to shoot the governor? And we also saw the tear gas and the canals, the water uh, repellents and so on, hot water repellents and so on. That is, we are talking of the governor of the state. Once he appears at the scene, it is expected that the policeman will seize whatever fire or whatever they had because the life of the governor was at stake but that they ignored what does that tell you it simply means that they are acting on orders to ensure that the impeachment proceedings against the governor and uh, if that means it, it uh, comes pushed on to show and it means they have to shoot excuse me they have to kill the governor they should kill him that is just the interpretation. Let us not forget that. Meaning is not in the message, but in the messages. And that really infuriated a lot of people's people who felt that the governor has been asphyxiated for so long, who felt that the hands of the governor have been fettered for so long, who see who refer to the governor as angrily as uh, uh, the PA to the former governor. There is no kind of name that they did not call the governor because of his demeanor. And uh, he has booked a lot, a lot of excesses from the factory government. Now you can imagine a situation where the governor won at the tribunal, the court case at the tribunal. It was celebrated in Abuja without the government itself. All members of the law sitters are assembly flew into Abuja, local government chairman flew into Abuja and so on. The governor started making calls in River State. It was in River State. Started making calls in River State uh, to people to come and celebrate his victory with him in government house. Now, why did that happen? Because somebody just wanted to prove to the world, especially the president of the country, that he was in charge. The man who invited them, the former governor who is the FCT minister, was not the one who won the uh, tribunal, was not the one who won the, the, the case in, in court. So what was it? Yes, no problem, he could celebrate. But it's expected that the person that the local government chairman and the House of Assembly members should celebrate with is the governor of the state. Yes, and we would have allowed that if he was still the governor of the state. We all knew what happened when uh, traditional rulers left River State and visited the then minister for transportation, which we And he came back and threatened a lot of them that whoever 
the better contractual rulers, some of them are our grandfathers, that whoever left the state will be dethroned. So, uh, but you will, and we, uh, that, that, sorry? But you will agree with me that the circumstances that brought Wiki to the government house and the circumstances that brought uh, the incumbent to the government house are, are quite different. Uh, he, he, knew, he knew what he was buying into when he allowed himself uh, to be used as a Wiki's uh, backup game, game player. Well, I'm happy with your choice of words. You are just being very careful because you're an heir. You wanted to say something and you withdrew it quickly. <laughs> I agree with that. Uh, Wiki was quite instrumental to the emergence of Fubara as governor of the state. No doubt about it. Against all odds, we fought for him. But it was a selfish fight. And why was it a selfish fight? Fubara was his cashier. Fubara became the DFA government house. Then I was a special advisor in government house and eventually became the accountant general. This is a man that has worked with government so Wiki. And to a very large extent, you know what I'm talking about here in Nigeria. To a very large extent, understands all the financial transactions that took place. And so you will agree with me that he felt safe in the hands of a Fubara taking over from him. This world never wanted at any point in time, I'm talking about the governor, never at that point in time, or never dreamt of becoming the governor of River State. Never. So it even came as a shock to him that he was chosen at the last hour as the governor to contest for the governorship of River State. Now, having said that, let us also not forget the fact that, yes, everybody, you know, the SNG we are talking about, who assisted him, the Jonathans assisted him to become the governor of River State. How did he treat the Jonathans? He treated them with levity once he, once he got office, simply because Jonathan lost an election. That's the truth about it. Now, Nobody gets up in the morning to become a governor, no matter how your dream is. Nobody. Even the president of the country cannot just get up. Uh, Tinibu did not just get up and say, I am the president of this country. There are internal workings. You have to politic. And a lot of persons will come. Some you will know, some you will not know. Let me tell you, in most cases, those that assist you to achieve your aim are those that are unseen and unheard of. In most cases, those that you see on screen, Shouting every day that Mr. A is my candidate, I have to support Mr. A. And if you compare to those behind the scene, are quite few. There is nobody except God. We give God the glory. But let me tell you, everybody is being assisted by one person or group of persons to achieve what that person wants to achieve. And that is the truth. Okay, look at the training of a child. I will tell you, most people will say, oh, the father has tried. Yes, because he paid the school fees, he bought the books, he provided feeding money. But you cannot dismiss the role of the mother of that child. There are times you are not in the house, and the child felt he couldn't go to school that day, and the mother will come talk to him, and he will go to school. Or the child is sick, even if the father provides the money, the mother takes the child to the hospital. So, what am I trying to tell you? It's a combined effort. Because you're talking of uh, the no, way the government uh, no, to office. That's no. quite different. It's not quite different. Nobody can. Okay, no. Now let us look at. Let us also look at uh, uh, the, the way the government came into the former government came into. We are talking of a meeting now. And, uh, now, when he became a local government chairman, in Obia Pass at that time, it was one term. He did not do two terms. Somebody I don't want to mention the name of there who sponsored him said no. Who is also from that local government, the former senator said no. You cannot go to second term. That would be unfair to us. It was, as at that time, this way to be which was a speaker. He took shelter, political shelter, for uh, other room to be amici. And of course, also ran to uh, Justice Miller, who was then a high court judge. But of course, we all knew her influence as a high court, not just her influence, the influence of wives and husbands. And that was how he became a local government chairman for the second term. So, in other words, the point I'm making is somebody must assist, assist you to achieve what you want to achieve. Uh, 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 I'm, 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 I'm just thinking. thinking you can make it. And the issue of equity, fairness, and justice, which was a subterfuge, uh, uh, simply uh, because he lost out, and just one minute, simply because he lost out. Open a ball. Open a ball. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm just thinking. You know, at the end of the day, the variants are the one being played around as the emotional football here. Yeah. Look at what happened in Edo. Edo no be Lagos. Edo no be Lagos. People uh, went 
took out and made sure that Governor Obaseki was re-elected. But in the last couple of months, the kind of press we, uh, the kind of things we read about Governor Obaseki is like if he, if he, con if he contests today in, in, in a do state, he probably would be kissing the electoral dust. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking at moments like this, politicians will play to the emotions. They will play to the David and Goliath emotions of the moment. But do, do they really deserve it? Either of the two sides. I'm just thinking aloud. Okay. Uh, in talk of the Edo saga, well, no doubt about that. There are issues. But then, you know, a lot of people are sick and tired of this Godfatherism. It's the truth about the pestilence of Godfatherism. And the, what the reaction you saw in River State was a referendum of the people disapproval of Godfatherism. This is a governor who was in town. Who, who, this is a man who is the governor of the state. The chief of staff appointed, nominated, I don't want to say appointed, because the appointing authority is the governor. The chief of staff was foisted on him. His uh, chief security officer was foisted on him. His commissioners were foisted on him. The local government chairman did not have respect for him. I just gave you an instance of when he won at the court. Then, uh, so many other things. Then, then, that rumor. The rumor that suffused the air was that he was not even allowed to leave the state for Abuja unless he has the imprimatur of his predecessor, who is the FCT minister. And that's why he had attended this, uh, what is it called, National Council of State, National, the son, uh, where the governors attend. National, National Economic Council. National Economic Council, yes, who is the governor's attend. Neck. Now, when they had this problem, you could see the Aruba State governor appear at that meeting, was at that meeting. You know, and even mandates we are taking to the former governor for him to approve before the governor signed. So the man was there, and you know, every spirit revolts a tyrant. What is uh, the problem to do? Uh, 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 cause of the problem. But please, can you just let me be so I don't lose my train of thought? If you look at, I'm very sorry, but let me tell you after this, I'll just I'll be brief. If you look at it, what happened, the primary proximate cause of, of, of this trouble now, the appointment of a commissioner and the visit to the Songhai farm. Songhai Farm is a farm, it, it was ideated by Roto Mitsubishi and established by Roto Mitsubishi. One of the old lessons, it was going to generate funds for the state and at the same time uh, guarantee employment for rivers. Because in the last eight years of FCT minister, we never had an appointment, we never had, uh, sorry, uh, employment. All he came up with was uh, Julius Berger. And Julius Berger, we were paying them about 750 naira a day, which was less than the the, the minimum wage. And even when the boys protested, one or two of them were killed. And the governor came out to say he was angry that why would he protest? The, the commissioner questioned Julius Berger on environmental impact assessment. That commissioner was sacked immediately for daring to question Julius Berger. If you come to River State, the place is flooded. Once it rains, the whole place is flooded. And that's the environmental impact assess assessment. That's the whole essence of it. Houses are built in this community. It is only when that locker has with the governor that the governor will come and demolish your property. Once you have locker has it, he will demolish that property or he will seize what you know. You know, and every spirit, every spirit revolts our tyrant. So when we had this in football, and Matthew, in the last 24 years, we've never had a reverend government. And that's why when certain person said, no, this is our turn. That is, I'm talking of the reverend people. This is our turn. Yes, and they came out to support him. They were right. Because for 24 years, since 1999, we've never had a reverend government. This is the first reverend government we've been having in the last 24 years. And so a lot of people started reading minutes into it as if, is it because, because his deputy governor is an uplander? So is it, is it because we clamored for an adjunct government, a reverend governor, and you brought this man, and all of a sudden you want to kick him out of office so that an uplander out there? You no, know, all kinds of uh, insinuations were moving into this whole thing. And that's why you see the massive support from the river people. Now it will also surprise you that the support did not just come from the river people. We had a lot of uplanders because they felt that this man has been so oppressed. He is not allowed to function as a government. For every step he makes, he has to get clearance from his predecessor. That, funny enough, the man appreciates the effort of this leader. So I will tell you, even at times in your discussions with him, he will tell you what. Well, I never expected to give to him. Let me give him that respect. I am beholden to him. 
But you cannot, because if you push a man to the wall, he bounces back to you with double effort. You cannot expect a man to remain silent for two years. I mean, for how, how long will Frisbee's breast tremble in silence before its owners? You know, the governor of the state, there was a time he threatened to resign. That's about, about a few weeks back. I am one. I, 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 I am one who actually believes that, from the moment Chief of Bafemi Awolowo in 1959, I yielded office to Akintola, to the Second Republic, to where we are now in the First Republic, from from uh, Namani to Umwebodo to Namani. Uh, up until up until this extant Ferrari in in uh, rivers, and one who believes that it is indeed delusional for anybody to think that he could pick a successor and expect the successor to be subservient eternally to him. Bola Metinumbu was Bola Metinumbu was uniquely fortunate that Fashola may be out of good uh, bringing or just being chicken hearted uh, did not use the the uh, sort of democrat that he had in his hand in 2011 and that is why you still have a phenomenon called bola metinumbu today uh, thank you, thank you. I, I really want to give you the last word the last word well my brother so what we what we saw uh, I'm talking of the impeachment, uh, I think we're still in quandary because we have uh, different views on the impeachment, different stories. Uh, some say the chief does sack, some say the chief does not sack, and so on. But please ask yourself a very simple question What are the impeachable offenses of the government that you want to impeach? Uh, but, uh, but, but, but as a civil rights uh, as a civil rights advocate, you know that there is a the mischief in the constitution regarding the impeachment process. In fact. A deputy governor has once been impeached in Nigeria for having at the back of his house a little agricultural project, you know, a, 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 a chicken, and yet the only, the, the only business that the civil service rule allows the civil servant to have around his house or her house is an agricultural Adventure. Look, you, I you, completely you, agree with you. I'm so, really pleased that you have in-depth understanding of this. Thing. How was Alamesha removed? How was the former Prime Minister go? We all know what happened. And if we they allow these things to go on with impunity, then we're in trouble because we're already in trouble. So that's why you see this resistance. Yes, we appreciate you for bringing this man. We said we want a reverend governor. You've given us the right governor because let us face it. If it's just not by election you know you they call it election but i call it uh imposition or like what we have it going on in nigeria now a coup that takes place every four four years you, you don't really elect and because the people are so impoverished open up up. most of them are even afraid of the leaders so whatever the open leaders up are, up i really open up, 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 up we do more of this trust me uh, <laughs> we we here are neither for wiki nor for fubara we just want I, people like you we, ju yeah. we, we just want people like you to have your day you know in the public uh, op opinion court you know just express thank yourself you. thank you very much i uh, will really enjoy your, your your session thank you it's my pleasure thank you thank you thank you yeah